discuss on the, the tricks that you are supposed to use, especially when you are answering the questions. So especially the theory question, you are going to check on those uh, specific tricks that you need to uh, to uh, to do the check on. So uh, just I mean as we wait uh, the system to open up. So whatever you discuss uh, is part of this and the data that I'm going to load. Uh, there is a, a certain data I have sent it to your WhatsApp and. Uh, maybe you found this data on WhatsApp. They had two worksheets. Some people are saying that it was computed, but it was not computed because even the question was not there. So we are supposed now to discuss Recording in progress. that question. So, and that is a question. So together with uh, what we are going to discuss today, then I would like uh, one of uh, one of you, because uh, probably I've been doing the task for my end. It's also important to see how maybe various uh, or several people can really come up with a conclusion or they can work out the data. Uh, so I have done this work of uh, typing the data. So the data is already there, is given. And now I would also like to uh, to see your input today, at least uh, and get a volunteer who will have to share his, uh, his or her desktop, share the worksheet, then demonstrate on how maybe he was able to reach to uh, a conclusion too. So that is, uh, we want to make it a bit uh, interactive so that at least we also see from your perspective, how do you really work, work out this data? So that one I'll give a uh, specific, uh, I will not open so that, that, that everyone can load, but you have to assign. If you are re ready to present, then you can uh, raise up your hand. Then you will be assigned time to share your screen. And then you can demonstrate on uh, how you came up with, uh, with your conclusion. So that one now from now henceforth until the time you'll be doing a pilot paper, that will be your mode. That is, uh, we'll be doing a, a block revision. Uh, we'll be using that mode of uh, mode of uh, revision that is sometimes you will be required to again share and share your ideas too uh, at least to gain still confidence on how to work out on this uh, on this work so i've sent i've sent that copy on the chat you can download the copy i've sent another one on whatsapp so you can also download it from there and so then from there, we shall work out this. So as you remember from your, your accounting, we said that the financial statement analysis is that process for analyzing the company's financial uh, statements for decision-making purposes. And the tools that we use for financial statements, we have the common size analysis. Uh, we also have the comparative analysis and the ratio analysis. Those are the three common types or the three common tools that we use to uh, run the financial statement analysis. So uh, we, will, we will start with the common size analysis. And the common size analysis, you remember very well, is categorized into two. So we have the vertical analysis and the horizontal analysis. Yeah, so uh, the reason why we probably we need to check on this because uh, vertical, vertical common uh, analysis size, uh, here you have to get the, you have to compute. We are given here to compute uh, the gross profit uh, percentage, the operating profit percentage, and net profit percentage. According to this data, we are given here 
you are supposed to uh considering this considering this financial statement here you're supposed to prepare that common size uh income statement and uh we end up with those uh margins that is those ratios down there so uh to get this uh, it is very, very uh, easy to compute this because in case you want to compute either here, uh, we are very sure or we are always guaranteed that the revenue, the revenue is what we consider here and it is already 100%. So, and everything else will be computed uh, over the revenue multiplied by 100. So it means that you want to get the cost uh, of sales percentage then you say it will be the cost of sale of a revenue uh, divided by 100. So that is uh, the procedure that you follow. That is, you say, we want to compute this. Uh, we will just pick the values that equals to uh, this amount over here. Of course, you take that amount uh, either positive, should be a positive number. Then you say divide by. Divide by revenue, divide by revenue. The revenue is here. Then we multiply by 100. But you know, in Excel, we really don't multiply by 100. Instead, we just press enter. And in the case the values are not computed as percentage, then uh, you'll have to, if the values are just general numbers, then you'll have to select percentage to compute them into, into percentage. So that is how you come up with or you realize that percentage. And once you do this, then uh, remember that that cell, that is cell B6, is supposed to remain constant. And to, to make it remain constant, you can just uh, make that cell absolute in our formula. Then from there, it will be required to uh, because this formula will be changing every now and then. Uh, some will have positive, other will have negative values. We don't actually compute all of them, but we we'll only compute those specific that we are told to do that. So how do you get the gross profit? We say the gross profit is already computed as what? As revenue uh, minus the cost of sale. They have included plus, the reason being that this is in bracket, it shows uh, it is represented in the form of negative. So you say negative again, negative, negative, then you get uh, a positive value, a wrong value. Then we are given administration, administration expenses that are given as negative, uh, uh, that is negative uh, 1,500. So of course the values are in, in thousands. Then you have the distribution expense that is already given as uh, this. Then the earning before tax. So which earning before tax you sum the gross profit, then you less those two expenses. Then after this, we are given the invest investment income. And under this, uh, the next milestone, because we have several milestones here. Uh, and here we will get we are told that this was 500. And from there, we are given earning before tax. Now, this earning before tax, we take the earning before tax, earning before interest and tax, then we add earning before tax. And uh, finally, we have the, the uh, income, expense tax, which was already provided, and the net income, where you take the earning before tax, then you add the income tax payment. Now, that was already computed. It was already computed. Our interest, we are to get these profit margins. So, and to get this profit margin, if it is gross profit, then we should take. So what do we do, do we take? We take the gross profit, that is the amount that we got here, then we divide by what? We divide by the revenue. Divide by the revenue. And this revenue probably will not change for other for the others. 
then uh, we have to multiply by 100. But instead, you're supposed to compute that term. So whatever you get there, if it was not percentage, then you have to convert it to percent by clicking on that percentage symbol and you get the percent from there. So that is uh, the first uh, computation. If you are told to give the operating profit, operating profit, then again, you follow the same suit that you have to compute this. Just a minute. So you can compute just before I I set up my network here, my my, my computer. You can compute the operating profit and the net profit. Just compute that, and once you get the value, please send uh, your results there on the chart. Send your result there on the chart. Oh, we should add the margins to the equation. Compute the foreign margins. Okay, no problem. Uh, you can add that. You can add that there. But this is percentage, remember? is percentage so it should be gross profit percent percentage so to summarize this that is supposed to summarize this eh? yeah so the operating profit is uh seen you got uh, what that is uh 51 percent uh 51 percent uh huh. Then so, how do you get a gross profit margin? Uh, you supposed to take what? But to take these uh the, the gross profit margin. There is somewhere you are given the earning earning before before interest and tax earning before interest and tax. Uh, that is uh, what you are going to take the earning earning before before interest and tax. You know what 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 this one means that. Uh, you you take that amount. That is, you take uh, the earning before interest and tax. Then you divide by you divide by the revenue. You divide by re the revenue. Then you, of course you have to multiply by. Uh, you have to set this one percentage, and it will give you fifty one percent. We said when you are given these values, it's always important to set them at least in one decimal place because you'll find. Probably we may have a different value on uh, on the right of the decimal point, which may uh, may may change our value. So either give it into one or two decimal places. Then uh, to get the net profit, the net uh, the net profit uh, the net uh, net profit, then we are already given the net income there. We are given the net income somewhere. So you see like the net income, you are getting 43, but in the real sense, it is not 43 uh, because 43 has rounded off. So that, that simply means that you are supposed to pick uh, the net income, which was uh, calculated here, then over, over the revenue and once you get over the revenue, then from here, you, you're supposed to, uh, to divide or to multiply by 100. And at the floating point, you select this. You can add into two. How do you set the decimal? So you, once you click, like you see here, we have 43. Uh, I've already got 43 percent. But now I want to make sure that this will give me the right value. So we just click on that cell. Then I in we have two options above here. We have increase decimal and decrease decimal. So what do you do? You increase decimals, and you get that the exact value 
is supposed to be 47.67. So at least two, two decimal places will give you an accurate result. So that is, you're supposed to give it in, in, in that manner. So that is uh, a simplest way of actually computing these uh, uh, statements. So I hope this is something that you did uh, previously, the vertical common issue. So you can compute all of them here, and then you pick the most required field, or you can actually do uh, down here, with whatever you have been asked, compute this. So when you're writing this one in an examination case, then it's supposed to be structured, supposed to be structured. So that is, uh, if if uh, to be on the safe side, to be on the safe side, I would prefer that once you type here, uh, do we add the word margin here? Uh -huh. So uh, just a minute. Uh, let me check. So to put this value here, then uh, once, we are supposed to compute the ratios. So this one, you can call them ratios, you know, that uh, I'm inserting another uh, cell here, and then I can just call these uh, ratios. Then here, uh, before we compute this, these are formulas here, then uh, you can just have a simple way of expounding. I've just moved this one a little bit, uh, distant from my values, then I'm supposed to input what I call the formula. So this we can have, yes, we can show how we arrived to our conclusion. And to do this one, you can have a simple formula that shows that. That is whatever we have just indicated. That to get this, uh, then we we'll take the gross profit formula is, the, the gross profit equals to okay. If you start with equal sign, it you bring issues. You just type direct. So that is gross gross profit. Then uh, we did what to gross profit. We divide by revenue. Revenue. Then, of course, we multiply by. Uh, we multiply by one hundred. Remember that when you're entering such a formula, then we should also uh, remember that the board mass is very very key. So, what are you multiplying with? Uh, multiply by one hundred. So you formulate. You formulate a formula here, and we show out the conclusion here. So with this, it you have explained very well how you reach into a into a conclusion. So and this now will be our table. That is whatever you have already uh, presented in that structured manner. So and the structured way. So you have to indicate each and every formula in each case that has helped you to come up with a solution. So anyone with a question there, I hope that one is clear, how to compute those ratios. So these uh, tasks are, these tasks are not uh, difficult. Uh, but what you need to do is just to remind yourself on those uh, particular statements that you did from foundation level up to the highest level. So we don't know which specifically they, they already come and test because we have seen them jump from one, one, uh, one module to the other. We have seen them jump from one chapter to the other, from the two already created past papers. So, but some of the things that I'm really expecting, uh, maybe this year, they, they will bring. 
uh, things related to loan amortization because some of these are not are not actually tested anywhere so far. But we believe that maybe they might or they might uh, decide to bring this. So in sheet number two, now you are given uh, this different worksheet. This was now a balance sheet. Initially, it was an income statement. For the balance sheet, I want you to compute the percentage, the percentage of uh, this, these items, that is all those non-current uh, and uh, non especially non-current, just compute for non-current, non-current uh, and current assets. So you compute the percentage here. And when you're using a balance sheet, now here we specifically use the total assets. So everything will be as uh, of the total asset multiplied by, by 100. So I would prefer you compute that there. Then we'll check those values together. So you'll be able to know what is the total asset, the total current asset ratio, we'll be able to see that too. So please compute that and give you a percentage for a few, like uh, the PPE, the inventory, and the total assets. Just compute. You get one value, so just compute for those. Then you can write out the solution there. So I hope we should have already got the value. Now, as you compute that computation, remember we have said that you compute this as percentage of the total assets, the total assets. As you compute that, I'm, I'm going to send yet another vertical ratio. Analysis. So I've seen for PPEs of a total asset equals to that six percent. Okay, that's fine. So I'm uploading again another file, but an Excel file. So let me see your solution. So far, I've seen one. Uh, you said for people, then compute for, we are, we are computing for, actually you can compute uh, up to here. That is for cash and bank to compute those percentage. So we said this one is for total asset. The formula is very easy. So you will see that. Okay, already these are, uh, so it just equals to the volume, even here for PPE, we divide by total assets. Uh, the total asset should not change, supposed to remain absolute. Good, I've seen, I've prepared all this. And again, when you press the end, uh, you just select this. 
then you can set it into percentage. And then you said we have to increase the number of decimal points to remain that to retain the accuracy of our, our data. So if this one was computed properly, then some we just need to copy down. So I hope you got uh, something close to that. So, and you know, some of things you not require them, like the total of this. So again, you proceed from here to here to get all the others receivables and the inventories out of the total assets, remember? of the total assets. So, So I would like, I would like uh, one of us, I'm sending this copy. I'm sending another copy. You can download that copy, check the question, and then uh, just try to analyze. It's a little bit different from the question you have just done. So the concept is the same. That question you're saying that was computed. So you already have it so far. Sorry, not this one. Sorry. In what's up? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I sent the long task. So in what's up, there is that task written vertical. So that's what looking for. So once you download, you can start working out on that question. Just start working out on the question. Then you see whether you actually get the same results. So the question, if you have already opened the question, it was checking on several items. So in that question, we are given an extract and 
This is how the equation looks like. Close this. And you're supposed to prepare this. Okay, you can decide to use your own way of doing it. I really prefer that when you are giving such a thing, then you should have it in a structured way. So you can actually copy or even do it from here. And then you compute those gross profit margin, the return on, on the capital employed. So I want you to try, try those. So let's do it down here. So just formulate out a worksheet. So you present the Roshi is already given the margin. So an NB was given down here that you're supposed to assume that uh, a very 65 days financial year uh, that is what to be used when you are computing this. So just for the sake of maybe some of uh, those who forgot how to compute, then if it is gross profit margin, then you're supposed to pick the gross profit divided by sales for 100. Then the inventory turnover, the inventory turnover, we can take the average inventory, like for 2020, the closing stock will be the average, so you don't have to compute the average, uh, divide by cost of sales, then you multiply by 100. So the return on the capital employment, uh, employment That is what say return on capital. You can say the profitable profit before interest and tax over the equity employment. Now uh, this equity equals to uh, the LTL then multiply by one hundred. So this a lengthy process. So just compute this. And I'm going to share one, share maybe how it came up to conclusion. Then I'm going to send my working uh, first. So check the data. Close the, uh, read down the equation properly, understand the equation. Then after you get the equation, now you can proceed.
So I want uh, one of the students to share how he came out with this. So, and we are going to compute both the growth, gross profit margin. So someone should uh, raise the hand, then wish uh, he, uh, someone just a volunteer. And then we will we allow you to share. And then you give us how you came up with that uh, computation. Anyone? Does anyone this your hand then will give you Just to remind, we said that we're supposed to compute from the data given, and this was our data. So we are given this. We are given two statements. One extract, one extract was uh, the income statement for the year ended that that year that That is then. Uh, given the sales, uh, uh, the go cost of goods sales, approximate purchase. And we are supposed to compute for two years, remember? So meaning that if we are computing for 2020, then here the gross profit margin, we said the formula is very easy. That is, we say the formula is gross profit you can type here our formula is gross gross profit uh, divided by the sales that is the revenue sales or the revenue and then multiply by 100 make it 100 percent so, and to get this one for 20, 2020, they will take the gross profit for 2020. Uh, they get the gross profit for 2020. So from the income statement, we have the gross profit. Then we divide by the sales, that is the revenue, and we press enter. Here we say that to get the percentage, then you're supposed to put this one in percentage and at least one or two decimal places so that uh, to increase the level of what? The level of uh, the level of accuracy. So when you get for 2020, since we refer to the formula, then in that formula that we have we have entered, the sales revenue should remain the same. So mean that before you copy this formula across, the cell C, that is cell C6, supposed to remain constant. So what do you do? In that cell C6, you're supposed to press F4 to make it constant. Then by doing that, now you'll be able to compute for 2021 by just dragging this across the screen, uh, or you copy this across, and you will get the value for 2021. Now that one you pick automatically, you pick the value of the gross profit of 2021 divided by, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So it should also change. That C6 should also change too, because the values of this one has already changed. So that means our formula uh, will not have any of this that is, that is locked. Just leave it like that, and then you copy this across the screen. So it will give you 16. So you have given you 16y, 
because it has picked which cells. You can see the cells has it has picked. So if you pick the gross profit for 2021, divide by the sales revenue for 2021, uh, and then it will do what? It will uh, get that percentage. So is that clear? Uh, can you do someone do for us the next? I already give the formula. I've already given the formula that the return on capital employed, the return on capital employed is profit before uh, profit before profit before tax and expense. There is profit before interest and tax divided by the capital employed by the way capital employed was multiplied by 100 where the capital employed is equity plus Of the ability. So, so I hope you have you have that uh, formula. You can have the formula somewhere. And then you compute that function there. So I want to make one of you here to share them. Then perform that tasks. You know how to share the screen. We are using your laptop and share the screen. So let me see from the host. So claiming from the host. Now, let me check. So anyone who have uh, computed this, so uh, someone is saying that the question was uh, not balanced. Let me check. Uh, hmm. So um, the balance sheet, well, the balance sheet, so this 
Okay, there was a problem. There was a one value here. I had a problem. No, what we are joking on the balancing of what? Uh, let me check is the balancing of what? Because if you check very well, balance it, balance it down here. The reliability and the asset are not balancing, let me check. So this is a question that was retrieved from the past paper, but we can check. Uh, yeah, it was just like that. It was just like that. The question was just like that. So there was the question was given just like that. So uh, I don't, I don't think this anything that you're going to change, but uh, the question was given this just like that. So if you check the current, that is this was given as this, 26, 20, 36, wire, then current asset was given as, yeah, the question was like that. So maybe, that information was required to answer the question. Yeah, exactly. Because that question was given just like that. And now uh, I've asked maybe you to, to share and come up with the conclusion, but no one is willing to do that. So then let's do it together. And uh, maybe later, uh-huh. The capital employed total assets minus uh mm, I'm checking. So let's perform that task. So capital employed, because you are told to give the return on capital employed, and here you are given the profit before before uh what was the profit? We check the profit. Uh, profit that is from our income statement. There was profit before tax. Then, if you take the profit before tax, divide by capital employed, and how do you get the capital employed? Someone have already said that you take the current asset minus current liability. So actually, if you are talking of the limited company, then we say that uh, uh, capital, we don't really use the word capital, but we talk of uh, what? We talk of equity, we talk of equity. If we are using, because uh, in, because in, in uh, in a company, in a limited company, you have different forms of capital. You have different, you have share, you have shares, you have, uh, you have different forms. So all of them, you just re re refer to them as equity. So, but you can also use the same, same thing, that the current, current assets, you say the current asset minus current liability. Then from there, you multiply by 100. So, maybe we can run that task here, so let's type the formula that will say return on capital employment. Then the formula employed, sorry. Employed. Then you say here. Profit. Type it in, in abbreviation. Profit before tax. Then divide by the capital employed. 
why a capital employed will just take the current current assets minus current liabilities. Then of course that the entire of this that you have computed in the brackets is then multiplied by 100. So can pick the can pick those values. Let me just pick equals to why is a profit before tax was given here. That is for 2020. We divide by now. What will be our uh, equity? So now, for now, what will be our equity? Comparing the data, we use just a minute. Uh, we need to use the values of the balance sheet. So that is, we have to use the values of the balance sheet. Sorry, there's something we need to include here. Just a minute. That is, uh huh. So we had current assets, current assets from our computation. We are given the current assets. So we'll take the current assets, say the current assets. We'll take current assets. Current assets minus Diabetes. And close the brackets. Then once you finish, oh, I think there's something we have messed up. Why did we mess? Why did you mess up? And uh huh. So whether the return on on capital employed the same with return on equity, uh, they should not be the same because the return on equity near future we check on equity. So that means uh, it will be given the equity. Of course, in a limited company, it could be equity involving several of those capitals. So separate the asset and then compute. Separate the asset and then compute the total asset. Mm -hmm. well, let me check. So uh, the formula should should take the the dot should we should use the total assets because now you see like in this case we are not included the other assets like inventory and so so it should be of total assets then less total liabilities I agree with you should be of that the total assets and uh, then less uh total liability. so we are given the the total assets actually uh i have seen somewhere maybe uh, the, there was a type a type of error you can check very well uh let's check this so this a type of error here uh, you're supposed to take this 
just a minute. Just a minute. So what was this? The value we got here was supposed to be what? Because we are given assets here, current assets. It's supposed to be total assets. Total current assets. Because the above here is non, non current assets. So that was is where our problem was, our typo error was. That is, uh, when, when you compute this, we have the, sorry, uh, no problem, just a minute. You're supposed to add some cells, of course. So to compute the current assets. So I'm just going to do this uh, simple task to add this on, on the data. That once you run this up to this point, here, you run this one up to that point, uh, we will have to insert some, have to insert here. So that at least we have what? What do you have here? These values supposed to be above here. So those a type of error. So that from here you have the current assets. You compute the current assets and finally you'll get the the total assets here. Again, it would be the confusing of uh, confusion of the data. Then you have the liabilities here, tax payables, credit payables, and so on. And once you compute this, you get a specific total here. Uh, we can have this as total non current assets. So you have a total here. You just type total. Sorry. You have total there. We also have another total here and another total here. So what will be this total? This total non-current. If you check, you'll find that this presents the total non-current. That is the total of this sum of that two. Then the current asset, we have them here, and the total current assets. Current assets is here. So meaning that, again, you are going to compute the total current asset across here. Uh, we will get a specific value. Then here again, you will compute the total of this to get a specific value, the total asset. Then we have the total current liabilities. Current liabilities. And again, so we can have its sorters here computed in that manner. So you see, this is now our data. This is the sum of this. This is the sum of this. And so mean that now in our formula, we are supposed to change a little bit our formula from where it depicts our cells. And we shall remove this. Sorry, we shall remove that. And we pick, suppose, take the current total, total current assets minus the total current liability. Then you press enter. You will get uh, 89.43%. And then you copy this formula across to our cells to the right. So this will be a very big number. So that is what you got. 
once you compute it will give us that value Auto sound. yeah so you have taken the total the total assets and total current liabilities okay it's okay okay i'll get it the total assets total assets minus the current liabilities so let me check so so far here we have we used so we have the total is a total okay just a minute kidogo we can insert again here Take the total. Total. Okay. So how do you get the total assets? Then we'll say that uh, we have the total non-current assets plus the current assets. Indeed. And the right. So, because it is capital, we have to include. Yes, I agree with that we have to include the all assets. So that is assets minus. Sorry, we start with equals. Sorry. So our formula will be here. So we'll take that. Our total asset somewhere here minus our current liabilities. Okay, that I get. That one I agree with you is supposed to be the total assets because you are looking for the for capital 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 when you talk of capital you say asset minus liabilities so meaning you need to change your formula here say asset uh, minus liabilities then multiply by 100 then once you get this you're supposed to copy the formula to the right to get the other percentage. Then you are given to compute the next computation, that is the, uh, the what do you call this? That's the inventory turnover period. Inventory turnover period. Now here, we were given some information down here that we assume that at 365 days financial year, uh, before we were given the required information, uh, this is something that was noted, it was a note down there. So meaning that to get the to get the inventory turnover period, then you are supposed to take what? Usually. Usually we take the average inventory of a cost of sales. Then multiply by 365. So someone was asking about liability, you mean total liabilities? And you see like in our computation, we don't have, we have only current liabilities. Do you have, do you have current liabilities? Yeah, we have current liabilities. We are not given those long-term loans and such. That way we are using that as our total current liability. So in this, in the next question, then you're supposed to pick the average, average inventory. But for 2020, since uh, it is, we are not given another year, just previous year, then the inventory that you have, that is the inventory that we are given here, 
will be our average. We just use that as our average. Inventories as our average there. So we'll take that as average inventory of a cost of sale, of a cost of sale. And uh, then you multiply by 365, 365. So you get this, then it will be able to compute. Uh, you'll be able to compute the inventory. Yeah, the inventory turnover, the inventory turnover. So maybe please someone who can try to put that formula and check what you get as the results. So you have the inventory of a cost of cost of sales, then multiply by 365. Let's do it together. Then uh, this where we compute our work. We say we get this inventory turn of a period. That is this for daily. Daily. We want to see that on daily basis, the inventory turnover will be how. That why we are given that you assume that 365 days from financial year. Then uh, we'll say, we're simply saying that uh, here we'll take inventory. Inventory. Then we divide by what? We divide by cost, cost of cost of sales. We divide by cost of sales. The approximate purchases. Eh? Then we multiply by 365 because we want to get for the day 365 that was given there. Then again, to compute here, then you say the inventory. Where is the inventory? So that is for, uh, taking for 2020. For 2020, inventory was given at this. We said now, since we, we don't have another year like 2019 here, then uh, we're going to use that one as our average. Then we divide by the cost of sales. You check here from our income statement, even the cost of sales. So here it was a negative value. So again, we just pick it the way it is. Uh, divide by cost of sales. Then you're supposed to multiply by 365. And then you get this. Uh, we can set it to that will give us percentage. So just a minute. So do we need to give a negative percentage? So if we are to refer to this cell, then we should just pick it like this. And remember that this this rate. That is the stock, the inventory turnover. Inventory turnover. Inventory turnover. For 2020, if you copy across, you should get for 2021. For 2021. For 2021. Then trade receivable correction period. So here now we will get something now different. Uh, okay, so just a minute. From the previous, then uh, I think we we'll have already failed for 2021 because for 2021 you're supposed to take the average. That means you're to, supposed to take for 2020. Okay, how do we go there? We get uh, for the stock for 2021, uh, 2020, then you get the average. You add them together. You get the average divided by two. You get the average. 
Then once we get the average for 2021, we do we need to compute the average. Yes, we need to compute the average. That will be very true because now uh, the formula should not be like this. Then the formula should be how. So we have to enclose this into brackets first. And again, even previously, that formula was still having an issue because uh, we don't need really a formula like this. The way we have put it here, uh, we need to enclose some characters and brackets. Yeah, we should always enclose some characters in brackets. Uh, but if you do this, supposed to compute what is in what is division first. So our bracket should be somewhere here. That is uh, the bracket should be somewhere here. So still give us the same solution. Yeah, though it will help us to uh, at least now extend this one by adding now that element of average and the element of average will be this we add with uh, that is D23. We add with this. Then we do what? That once we add these two, we can divide by two to get the value. Then the entire of that, whatever you have already computed, is then divided by 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 by, by this d seven, then multiply by the sixty five. The syntax are so many. Maybe you can remove this. And okay, the syntax still many. Is a bracket that should not be here. Okay, that is fine. Got it. So that is. Uh, the exact value now when you get the average. So the average will not actually be a, a very big number, it's almost close to that, but you should in, include the average. You should always include the average for 2021. That is you take the cost, of that is the inventory for 2021, then of that 2022, you divide by two, then from there you proceed with your function then the next thing remember that you need to remind yourself of this concept uh, that now uh, another common size is that uh, when you are computing this you don't know where the examiner will pick the equation from uh, they tend to pick the equation from any points so the only thing that uh, i'm really guaranteeing that uh, uh, you need to you need to check from the previous now two papers that they have given the pilot paper and the, the last paper. They have really concentrated much on financial management about the NPV, IRR. Uh, they did a, a bit of uh, the cash flows. They did a number of cash flows so far. Uh, we, we have seen scenario. We have seen the scenario analysis. In a number of papers, that is the, the two, actually the two papers, you have seen that concept of scenario analysis. Uh, so something that is here that we have never seen them tested. One is loan amortization. That is something that, uh, again, uh, is uh, high, high chances of being tested. 
And maybe a question about the time value of money uh, here analysis will be extracted maybe from uh, from uh, from a, a paper or from one of the equations to indicate this. Although most of it would be an explanation of why uh, why this difference, the reasoning be, reasoning behind being time value of money. So otherwise, it's important again to remind yourself on. Uh, every concept on this uh, course outline. But in case uh, you get the question, sometimes time is wasted when you try to evaluate that this question is from which part. Uh, that is the knowledge of this question supposed to be retrieved from where. And sometimes uh, you find someone wasting maybe 10, 20 minutes just trying to reason out. Sometimes even start uh, running the analysis the wrong way uh, using a different uh, principle. But once you get that, how are the equation for ratios? They are like this. Immediately you see this question, you know it's all about ratios. Then you just go ahead and, and compute. And so that one minimizes the time for uh, computing your work. So, so is a, uh, some of these things maybe you did a long time ago, no problem, but it's important to, to remind ourselves. Because during our revision still, uh, we, will go, we are going to have like several questions about the ratios. Then uh, I'll send you those questions you attempt. Then you can send your results. You can now compare those results and see uh, whether maybe it's it's now possible to do the question very fast. So to compute the trade receivable, the trade receivable correction period. Uh, so uh, the, the only thing that you're supposed to say here, because this is now receivable correction period, then the average trade receivable, you take the average trade receivable, divide by the credit sales. So here we consider the credit sales, but because the sales were not given that these were, were credit sale or cash sale, uh, we, are, we are going to treat all of them as credit sales. We're going to treat all those sales as credit sales. So that means you take uh, the average trade receivable, which was already provided, uh, then you divide by the credit sale, Cost the sales that you already have there, then you multiply by 365. That is, we are talking of this average, average trade receivables. Trade receivables, average trade receivables. I'm just using abbreviations. Then we say average trade receivables. Then we divide by credit sales, by credit sales, then we multiply by three six five. Multiply by three six five. So that is we will pick the average. Trade receivable. That is the uh, average trade receivable for 2020. Then we just pick average trade receivable. This was, was given somewhere here. Average trade receivable. Then we divide by what? We are told to divide by the credit purchases. Credit purchases. Credit purchases. Now, what are these purchases? Like, is it credit sale of, oh, sorry, credit sale, sorry. Credit sale, sorry. The credit sale of where our credit sales, of course, we have said we treat, we will treat them as uh, credit sales because it was not actually provided uh, in our additional information. And uh, finally, uh, we have to multiply this one by 365. Of course, we need to uh, compute this one properly. 
So how much do you get before you press enter? How much do you get? Uh, how much do you get? Maybe we can see your answers too. There, good. It's okay to give us that. And once you do give it this, and since it was an average for the year 2021, though so if you copy, like you realize there was not much difference between the two now, because uh, if we check the credit state, that is the uh, the trade as a minute. But if we check the average trade receivable for 2021. Receivable for 2021. If I told to get the average, then means we're going to take the as uh, divide by two. Then from there, I'll proceed with my function. So that is for 2021. Probably I have to modify on this function. So modifying see, will give us a closer value. So maybe you can try set that average, just set the average of that and compute again this. For the trade payment, trade payable payment period, then you're supposed again to analyze. Uh, now here we are going to, to use the average trade payables divided by credit purchases now. Uh, multiply by three, 65, by three, 65. So please just perform those tasks, perform those two tasks and give out the solution. So uh, you've seen how you, you should actually go about running this. Remember that whatever you have done is just vertical, the vertical, uh, just on the one part, common size, but the common size. We still have horizontal common size. So the concept closely connected. That, that means uh, what I'm going to do is just to let me read that question. I'll check this question. I have to cross check a number of times uh, before I send. You see, like this one had some typo errors. Then I'll send that question. Uh, probably tomorrow evening there, you can just download the question and then you try and attempt, uh, you attempt that question. So uh, that's good. I've uh, uh, really encouraged by those people who are actually attempting, sending the answers uh, because you're supposed to be uh, actually also doing it there. That shows there are some people doing it. And we said that it will be very, very, very awkward if uh, you're just listening. This is not about listening and just viewing. Something you're supposed to be practicing there. And as you practice, then you'll be able to master, the, master how to do it. So, um, uh, I was saying that you have some sections of theory, probably on Saturday, coming Saturday. And that question will engage uh, the specific part of the theory that maybe we need that require some technical, some technical uh, clarification of the data. So, uh, before this, I have already sent uh, that now booklet that has uh, that has been reviewed. So I, I've just reviewed some content there that was not uh, well expounded previously, and we are going to go through that that content. I will share it again, but we are going to discuss it together. That is part by part. In case maybe you missed the, the first part, especially this first part about the introduction to Excel, there is uh, a number of things we're going to go through, especially uh, the major functions of Excel. That is something we did, but 
Again, you theoretically just go through just to remind some people there. But the concept I want us to concentrate much on is the first part, the introduction to data analytics. This one requires some uh, IT, uh, IT uh, knowledge. So that simply means that we will have to uh, we will have to discuss it now using a different mode. Uh, again, uh, we will be sharing with another lady here. We will be sharing with another lady. So we will be discussing this uh, part of it. You will discuss the other part. Then, uh, but we are going to use the same same booklet. So uh, you will have to. Maybe you get a different uh, uh, different understanding of this part. So it is important to concentrate as much on the theory sometimes because as this from the basis of data analytics, so part of it is done practically. But if you are able to measure much on theory and get at least the least, you get at least twenty percent or the twenty percent of that. Then uh, I think that is already a good a good pass already. That now if you proceed to practical, at least you get two, just one or two questions. Then uh, you just fall on the almost on the cross line. So uh, today we are going to stop them and. Uh, I'll send you the copy tomorrow, uh, the same time like this. Then you just download and you start going through it slowly by slowly before we start that lesson. So thank you for joining the class. Have a good night.